Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is Tuesday, the 13th of September. And tonight I'm going to talk a little bit about the way printers handle gloss differential and the way it affects certain papers more than others. Now, I've been talking up and down about the Pro 1 and how wonderful it is the way it uses the Chroma Optimizer, especially when you choose to use it as a full coat, how it evens out these just the overall look of the image. And so gloss differential just sort of disappears, bronzing disappears. But on printers that do not have the advantage of having a gloss enhancer, such as the Pro 800, even the 3880 and the 3800, and any of the Epson K3 printers do not have that functionality. So you end up having problems where areas that have higher ink density are actually sometimes glossier than the paper base itself. So I have a prime example here. And this is a bas relief of a Civil War. Basically, it's a uh, monument in Antietam battlefield. And as you can see, it's a gorgeous bronze. And I shot it under direct sunlight, so the contrast rate is really high. These shadows are nearly black. The highlights are overblown white almost as white as the paper border or 255 255 255 and in these areas here we have zero 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 and so it is rather difficult to be able to get even gloss every area that has pure white is lower in gloss than areas that ink was applied to the base is lower in gloss than any areas where ink was applied to. And why is that? Because the ink is pretty glossy. This is the PCK3 HD ink, and it's a very glossy ink. Performs wonderfully on papers that have a higher background gloss. And so what happens here is, again, you can really clearly see, if I was to aim it at certain angles, you can see the areas that are sort of matte, okay? And so to even that out, there's a couple of tricks that one can do because we don't have the luxury of gloss optimizer or chroma optimizer or any kind of gloss enhancer. So what we do in this case is we, in Photoshop or any kind of um, photo editing software that allows you to bring the highlights down selectively, you can use a curve adjustment, bring down the highlights about five points. In other words, what you want to do, whether they contain detail or not, what you want to do is bring them down so that at least they receive some application of ink, okay? These areas here, absolutely no ink was deposited. And so they appear the much duller um, color of the, or reflection of the paper base. And then right around these areas here, the little light gray areas, they're glossy because they did receive a little bit of ink. So what we need to do is bring these highlights down about five points. In other words, make them about 250, 250, 250, or even a little bit less than that. And that will diminish that difference or that gloss differential. It's not caused by the inks not being glossy. It's caused by the inks being too glossy. And so they end up being, the image ends up being glossier than the background gloss of the paper stock you're using. And in this case, Canon Pro Luster is less glossy than areas where ink was applied. Now, had this gone through the Pro 1, then the background would be a lot glossier because Chroma Optimizer would have been applied, especially if you choose overall application, which this is what I do So for most of the time. Now, I could run this to my Epson 1400, which I have set up for gloss enhancer and even out that area but that would be kind of cheating so again so my recommendation is to when you end up with problem images like these is to bring down the highlights using a curve adjustment and don't affect anything else just bring down the highlights about five points and that way they will force the printer to actually lay a little bit of ink there so this will be a slight shade darker instead of being pure white as the background no ink is applied, so therefore they will only be as glossy as the paper background. The rest of the image is glossier, and you'll get this huge 
loss differential result. And so that is my recommendation. And this actually solves the problem most of the time. All right. Now, something sad happened today. I got word from my friend who had been providing me with PGI 29 cards. The school that he worked for this summer basically went out of business and they closed down. They closed down shop. So he will no longer have sources of cards for me. Now he is trying to contact another art institute that has a uh, printing lab. And so once he hears from them, whether they will be able to supply him with empties, then maybe we can proceed. But at this point, I have about 22 full sets of cards left. I started off with 30. So that's not bad. So once these are gone, they are gone. And then you will have to do the modification on your own PGI 29 cards. If you own a Pro One, of course, you will be able to modify your own, get chip, chips from Precision Colors, inks from Precision Colors, and proceed as uh, you would had I not been able to provide you with extra sets of cards. Now, I do, however, also have some extra single color cards that you can order at $6.50 a piece. You will have to email me first, and I will try to give you the best, uh, most economical shipping costs for the uh, number of cards that you order. As you know, um, U.S. shipping is a lot cheaper than overseas. Overseas, I can do a box of um, anything less than two pounds for about $23, $23, $24 to most places, places in the world. So that is it. I was very saddened to hear that. And, uh, but you know, I kind of expected it to happen. And my other local source, uh, it's very sporadic. So I think that's going to be it for this project. Once the cards are gone, the cards are gone. And uh, I'm gonna keep a few sets for myself, which I will be able to continually reuse. But, um, just thought I'd let you guys know about that. And um, let's see. Oh, yes, I contacted John Cohn himself today, and hopefully he will answer me back, trying to get them to provide me with some uh, of the new PKHD ink, which is supposed to be extremely dense, dark black photo type black ink for the K3 systems, including the P800, P600, and all of the printers or predecessors that use K3 ink set. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to incorporate it with current OEMs, uh, inks that I'm running on certain printers, as well as the inks from Precision Colors. And we'll do comparisons and see where this ink uh, comes up as far as being able to improve the blackest blacks in images. And uh, although I cannot imagine this being any blacker than this is right now, but uh, we'll see. And uh, I uh, sort of gave him a short proposal and we'll see what uh, they think. If they provide me with the inks, whether they do or not, I'm going to probably buy some anyway. But I wanted to run it by them so that they can either um, tell me not to do it or to do it. And so I don't want to do things behind people's backs. So I wanted to contact them first and sort of throw this proposal at them and see how they feel about it. Uh, any, any type of testing of this sort needs to be done by someone else and not the company who uh, produces this uh, product. So I will be their independent uh, tester if they so wish. Okay, that is it for the evening. Got to hit the sack. Got to put eye drops in my eyes to see if uh, I can uh, relieve the uh, tearing and itchiness that I have right now. Anyway, summer's almost over, folks, so the fall will be here soon, and uh, things hopefully will change. <laughs> All right, so please don't forget to subscribe, folks. Don't forget to share and like. And until the next time, which will be probably tomorrow, happy printing, everyone. Bye-bye.